Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Just a quick heads up before we get started on this video. I was looking through my old recordings and I came across a bunch of videos from 2019 from a 2 versus 2 tourney that Nimzo set up. So here's a bunch of games from that. Um, I've gone through to see if they're okay and I think, you know, for for a suite of videos, I think, they, I think they're good. Um, but the big warning is these are old meta and old balance. These do not represent the current meta and the current balance. Do not take necessarily um, build advice or unit composition advice immediately from this video. Take it as, a, as an idea for things, but uh, don't try and copy the stuff because it's, well, the balance is old, it's basically. supposed to be British. Can, can someone please tell me what Greg is on? Because I want some of it. Actually, no, I don't. <clears throat> Here we go, semi-final two at Liggity Long Last. for the colonies. Huh. That's something I want, wanted to do lately, actually. Not go and make colonies, but uh, get the expansions for Civ 6 and maybe play a game of that. I have the base game, but I don't have the expansions, and I hear the expansions are pretty decent. Civ is a nice chilled game, which I would definitely be up for. Personally, I must admit, I really do like cinnamon tea. I don't know what is, you know, what draws me to it so much. Possibly the cinnamon. Um, but I do really like a good Christmas cinnamon tea. That's just me. That's just me. Here we go then. Team Red on the South Pole. Is that the South Pole? No, it's the North Pole. Team Red is on the north, and Team Blue is on the south. Team Red, we got Payne, Corgi, and uh, the Savant. And down on the south in Blue, we got Dirty Apples and Killer Pumpkin for Spooky Month. He's gone all Killer Pumpkin instead of Kiwi. All right. Anyone? Anyone? Anyway, is what I meant to say. Ooh, hello. Look at this, we got double pelican straight off the bat. Faber's coming out of the factory going straight off to land over the far side of the map. Now that is an interesting strat coming out from Kiwi and Dirty Apples. From Team Fruit. There we go, look at this. Go on, grab that extra one. Go on, grab it. Your micro's floundering, Team Blue. Sort it out. We've got Fabers coming out and about, but uh, a little slow. Team Red, on the other hand, expanding in a rather conventional way. We have our first striker of the game, of this tournament. Look at this guy. Rolling around. We have our first striker, boys and girls. Actually, looks like it was our second striker. <laughs> Gosh. So we've got one Faber all the way up there already, turtling himself in. We still haven't had that second uh, fabricator picked up, and there we go. Where's that going? It's not going to drop there, surely. It could have walked in that time! Uh, oh well, I guess. It makes sense to do something. We've got another couple of fabs here, though. Can we get pelicans coming in to save them? That is the question. They possibly don't need saving, though. The ants and the docks come in to save the day. The couple of fabs. Oh, there one goes from the south.
Team Blue, though. Whoops, hello. Interesting strat with this fab. I find this intriguing. It's going to seriously pay for itself. And Team Red aren't going to know about it for a fair while. They're going lobs too. Spawning together, going three air factories straight off the bat. Box, box of vehicles. And loads of strikers as well to defend against potential bombers. I like the idea of this, but playing against a docks heavy force... Those strikers definitely aren't going to be used for aggression. Rather, heavy defense against the air. Gosh, chat, you guys are really arguing about tea. I must admit, someone at work brought back from, I think it might have been the States, actually, cookie tea. It was broken cookie crumb flavored tea. Only in America could you come up with such a thing. I haven't tried it, so I can't say whether it was any good or not. <laughs> but goodness me. Anyway! As for any more jokes and conversations about tea, you can bag it up and put it away somewhere. There we go. So we're having a few mixes of vehicles and docks pushing around on the other side of the map there. Out to the east. To the west, we have a little bit less of a decent play here. We're desperately trying to defend here. Oh, the striker's going to make all the difference. Watch. Watch this. Oh, no. Maybe not. <laughs> Actually, no. The striker posthumously killed that tank. There we go. Look at that. All of that was the striker. And the potential loss of this fab was that striker as well, but it's not going to get lost, so... Ah, oh, well, sounds like we're putting too much faith in the striker. But all the same, Team Blue pushing out slowly to the east. West less well defended, as I was saying. Red have managed to push up and started to put up a proxy factory down there on the equator, which is good for them. T2 bot coming up on the south from blue. T2 air from red. Go with uh, gunships, I wonder, first. Or maybe horseflies to pick off the expanding fabs relatively uh, expediently. Maybe go with gunships instead. Thank you for the follow, mustn't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Manning. Don't panic. Oh, look at this. This this striker force. I'm not entirely sure Team Red are aware how to play strikers. You don't really tend to send them in against tanks like this. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. No. Not going to work. Their popcorn units, pop, 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 and gone. Barely a scratch. Red, they're doing a nice little bit of scouting with their air. Meanwhile, blue have yet to do such a good thing. That being said, they are making very good incursions onto the other side. They're preventing, or rather, raiding those uh, is, those expansions. Faber still survives, but the docks are going to move in and take that out. And this is looking rather good for Blue here. Up on the eco big time by a good 50 mechs. Floundering a little bit with the power, but still. Make sure that their air micro remains on point. There's only a single spinner in this advancing army there, so... If that can be focused down... That being said, the air support is there, real, present, and correct. Slammer's coming out. The T2 factory has completed for the bot blue team. Air is almost there for Team Red.
Guys, why are you arguing about biscuits? You need to be arguing about scones. Let's bring it back to reality. Scones. Not tea, not biscuits. Scones. First question, is it scone or scone? Second question, how do you take it? Nothing. Jam. Cream. Jam, then cream. Cream, then jam. Cream, then jam, then cream. If you're very greedy. Cream, then jam, then cream, then jam. Or are you a heathen and put chocolate spread on it? It's not scone, Phil, until I've eaten it all. Then it certainly is scone. <laughs> what are scones? <laughs> Someone educate the poor man. <laughs> oh dear. Cheesy scone with Nutella. No. Blue doing pretty well here with their advancing armies. Red finally managing to shore up their uh, their frontiers. They've managed to lock them down pretty handsomely. And you can see in the army tab there, the armies are starting to equate, though Red do have a lot in the way of air. So in terms of ground, the, uh, the air for Team Red, including Hornets, no doubt, no less, actually uh, managing to defend them reasonably well but they do need to re-expand they do need to get a little bit better at that blues uh, early expansions here to this little fork still alive and kicking So here, we had a very strong blue early game, but their momentum is stalling a little bit. They need to get some more units, more consolidated army, and push! They also need to get a little bit more in the way of air, because these gunships and hornets here are starting to look threatening. We only have the single hornet, and we're going for lots of gunships and phoenix now, and that's going to maintain red's control of the air. Blue pinging it, saying, look at that air, that's not looking good for us, and whoever pinged that would be correct. Because it's not looking good for them, that's a lot of metal that those gunships can raid very quickly. And get out. There we go, good micro there from red, keeping blue's air away from that gunship cloud. That being said, this little force here, that is not quite so little, has to deal with mines. Have we got any detection in there? The answer is we do. We have a hero skitter right there. That is going to save the lives of this entire army. In fact, we've got two. Two skitters. I'll highlight them so that you can see when they die. If they get picked off, that is. Although it's not going to matter too much anymore because the mines are mostly gone. But those skitters are providing a huge amount of vision. Which is going to be very, very good for these slammers to use their maximum range. There we go, keep them alive. Back away from that commander a little bit. We don't want to lose half of this army against that commander there. Look at all of that air from red that is uh, looking very idle. Not doing a huge amount. That commander probably could have walked into that army and taken out a little bit more of it. But ultimately, red's army, as we did note earlier... The ground numbers were not there. Most of it was in the air, and the ground has fallen away. Where's it gone? Well, I don't know. I didn't say skittles, I said skitters. I must admit, I never really liked skittles. They were a bit too chewy for me. They were too small to warrant being chewy. 
If they were just suckables, then sure. But and M&Ms are horrible because they have nuts in them. Some of them, anyway. Why would you get M&Ms anyway when you can get things like Maltesers and Minstrels? M&Ms are like budget Malteser Minstrel combo. Yeah. Just no. Just no. I agree. Skittles are better than Skitters. This is true. Down goes red team. Blue continues. So we're going to be watching the bronze game now. Payne and Savant.